Episode 191, Disappearing Act. Emma sat up and looked at Eric. What? When did this happen? Lisa told me she heard Richard talking to someone at H-World on the phone, just before the show. He stepped out of the water and wrapped himself in a bathrobe before helping her out of the tub. She walked over to the bed and sat as a sense of disappointment ran through her. She hadn't known Richard that long, but he'd put his heart and soul into helping her. And aside from Eric, she couldn't picture anyone else as her manager. He'd become a friend, and she hated to see her friends suffer. What's on your mind? Eric asked her. He may not be my manager anymore, but he doesn't deserve to be treated like this by Charlotte. She'll use any excuse to bully someone. Plus, do you really think she'd let him go so easily? If she's removing him, then she has a plan. And I don't want him reduced to nothing again if he leaves H-World. He's helped me, so now it's my turn to help him, she said vehemently. To herself, she thought, of course, if she's already told him that he's being replaced then I'll probably lose him as a manager no matter what I do. And I have a feeling Richard knows that too. At the Orchid Hotel, Richard had separated all the new invites, current contracts, and completed jobs before briefing Lisa on everything. He also told her about Emma's current status and the contracts she should avoid and use. Lisa lay on the sofa and listened reluctantly. He had already planned out a course for Emma, and as long as they followed his plan, she would be a supermodel in less than a month, on par with those at Star King. Are you listening? I've thrown a lot of information at you, he said as he tapped her on the forehead. She lifted her head and looked into his eyes. She'd never realized how pretty his eyes were. They twinkled like stars. Do you have to go? she asked. Lucas said a lot of bullshit, but he was right about one thing. I'm an employee of H-World, so I don't have a choice but to do whatever Charlotte tells me to do. He replied with a helpless and broken-hearted expression. Emma was the first person he'd come across who made him passionate about his job since Arnie died. He'd had every intention of staying with her till the end. But thanks to Charlotte, that wasn't going to happen. Have you told Emma that you're leaving? Lisa asked. No, the new manager is already on his way. Once I finish briefing you on everything, I'll have to head back to New York. Lisa took a deep breath as she tugged on the tassel hanging from the sofa. She hated Charlotte and her disgusting methods. Are you sure you can't stay? She begged again. There was no way she could do half as good a job at managing Emma as he did. He dealt with contracts efficiently and handled all sorts of dinners, auditions, and languages without a problem. Most importantly, he was a good person. He didn't know whether to laugh or cry as he said, Take good care of Emma for me. You know Charlotte will come up with a way to deal with you for everything you've done as soon as you go back to H-World, she warned him. I'm not afraid of her. He stood up and grabbed his jacket and luggage as he continued. If you don't think you can handle this, feel free to hand the reins over to Eric. She really wanted to stop him, but she didn't know how. As soon as he left, she called Emma. Hello, Lisa, she answered sleepily. Emma, Richard's gone. He headed to the airport now to return to New York, Lisa said anxiously. Emma sat up in bed, wide awake, and hung up before calling Richard, but he didn't answer. Emma had no choice but to text him. I can't stop you from going back to New York but I won't hesitate to retaliate if I find out Charlotte is trying to humiliate you again. No one has the right to hurt you. Richard laughed quietly as he read her message. 
Having her for a friend made everything worth it. He was going to miss being her manager. Emma's movements woke Eric up. He sat up and noticed she was staring off into space, clearly in a bad mood. So he got up and got her a glass of water. Eric, Richard's gone. I can't stand watching a friend suffer, she told him. He sat cross-legged on the bed and held her as he tried to comfort her. It's not like you'll never see him again. I know that Charlotte won't stop at just firing him, she said, leaning into him. He held onto her shoulders and said gently, He knows what he's doing. Even if she tries to make things difficult for him, he has other skills besides managing models. He studied as a director years ago and received several awards. Did you really think he didn't have other options? I just hate how she's always trying to hurt and destroy people, she said. We won't let that happen, he said fiercely. She nodded, knowing that Charlotte would be the one to suffer if she dared do anything to Richard. I know, but it still leaves me without a manager. My popularity is skyrocketing after yesterday's show, which means more money and more jobs. And I don't trust anyone that Charlotte set up for me. We both know they'll be trash and loyal only to her. The entire company was whispering and pointing at him when Richard returned to H-World the next day. He knew it was because of the recording between him and Charlotte that was still the top news headline. When he walked into Charlotte's office, she turned in her chair, stood up, and slapped him. Do you have any idea what you've put me and this company through? She asked sharply. He didn't respond or try to fight back. He held back all the feelings of anger, hate, and betrayal he felt toward her as she ranted at him. I don't care how you do it, but I want you to explain to everyone what was going on with that recording, or you won't like what I do in return. She snarled. What will you do? He asked, curious how far she was willing to go. It's your fault that the company is suffering a loss and facing possible bankruptcy, she said. Either explain and get us out of this mess, or I'll tell everyone about the sugar daddy Arnie had before her death. Episode 192 Loyalty returned. Richard's eyes widened and his face grew red in anger. He grabbed Charlotte and said through gritted teeth, You've gone too far. Would you really malign someone who's dead and can't defend themselves? I don't even care about the living. What makes you think I care about the dead? She said, laughing lightly as she gazed at him with dewy eyes. Richard, we've been friends for years. How could you help Emma? She can't do half the things I can for you. Is she really worth giving up our friendship? He loosened his grip as he sneered. Friendship? You have no idea what it means to be a friend. Emma may not be able to give me fame and fortune, but she did give me loyalty, kindness, and true friendship. She never once tried to threaten or blackmail me like you have. You make me sick. Charlotte's heart panged as she said, I'm in a difficult position. You have no idea what that's like. Emma has it harder dealing with an evil boss like you. Charlotte remained quiet as he continued. I'll gladly hand in my resignation, but I'm not vouching for your innocence regarding that recording. If you don't, then I'll tarnish Arnie's name. You'll only have yourself to blame when his name gets dragged through the mud, she said. He glared at her. It took everything he had to refrain from lashing out and slapping her back. Clenching his jaw, he said, Fine, I'll help you. What do you want me to do? 
I want you to hold a press conference and tell everyone you fabricated the recording by piecing words together, she said before turning her back on him. She wanted him to lose all the standing and respect he'd gained since coming back to H-World and working with Emma. I'd rather take the blame than let her ruin Arnie's name or try anything else with Emma, he thought to himself, resigned. He sighed. Fine. As he turned to leave, he added, You'll regret this. She didn't turn around or react in any way to his words, except to snort in contempt. As long as Arnie's reputation is on the line, he'll do whatever I want without question, she thought. Richard left her office and headed to Arnie's grave, where he sat quietly. I wish you'd taken me with you, Arnie. It was nighttime in London, and Emma still hadn't gotten a response from Richard, making her anxious. There wasn't much she could get Luke to do in regards to H-World, and besides, Kaleidoscope had enough on their plate. Thanks to Richard's absence, Lisa was busier than usual. She had trouble with the different languages and didn't understand a lot of the professional terms. Emma, can you help me? she asked. Let me have a look, Emma said, grabbing the laptop and looking over the notes Richard had written. This is a void contract. We've already rejected it. Ugh, I wish I knew that earlier. I spent the last few hours going over it. Eric came out of the study once he finished dealing with a few things for Kaleidoscope. He took one look at the stressed expression on the two women's faces and took the laptop from Emma's hands. This was exactly what she hadn't wanted him to do, but they needed help. After looking through her emails, he prioritized all the emails related to the jobs she would be taking on next. Thanks to the success of JK's show, she would be staying in London a little while longer. She'd received quite a few runway offers from some big name brands. Eric, I want to go back to New York for a couple of days, she told him. He knew she was worried about her friend, and until she was satisfied with Richard's current situation, she would never be able to focus on work. He nodded and said, I'll get someone to organize your flights and postpone your jobs. She nodded her head in thanks as a rush of emotion swept through her. She appreciated that he always stood by her side and supported her, no matter what. Lisa's phone rang, and she looked down to see it was the new manager Charlotte had arranged. Reluctantly, she picked up the phone. The manager exploded in anger the minute she picked up. Where are you, you incompetent assistant? Why isn't Emma at the hotel room arranged by the agency? It's the middle of the night. Lisa opened her mouth to respond, but nothing came out. She just stared blankly at Emma. Hello, are you deaf? Answer me! He raged. Emma suddenly grabbed the phone from Lisa's hand and said, You're fired. What? How dare you fire me? Who do you think you are? I'm Emma Miller, she responded angrily. The manager panicked. He thought he'd been speaking to Lisa and didn't realize Emma had taken the phone. His attitude changed as he attempted to speak in a flattering tone. I'm sorry, Emma. I got worried when I couldn't find you guys. I'm sorry, too. You've insulted my assistant. I refuse to work with you. You can tell Charlotte exactly what happened if she asks. And you can also tell her that a pretty package doesn't hide the trash underneath. She hung up the phone and handed it back to Lisa. Later that night, the three of them headed to the airport. Thanks to her increased popularity from JK's show, she had to be extra discreet. Kyle didn't capture a single clear photo as their car sped out of the estate. He couldn't even get a shot at the back of the car. After they boarded the plane, 
Emma found out about the article Lucas had released about her allegedly flirting with a male model a few days ago. Everyone had kept it secret from her, and Eric had spent a ton of money to make sure the Charlotte story remained at the top of the search bar. Eric, you didn't have to do that, she said, looking over at him. I couldn't just stand by and watch him try to humiliate you, he responded as he wrapped his arms around her. She was speechless and simply intertwined her fingers with his, gently placing a kiss on the back of his hand. After an almost 10-hour flight, they exited the airport discreetly and headed for the pickup area where Luke was waiting for them. A news clip flashed across the airport screen. Richard from H-World Entertainment was going to hold a press conference. Emma was sure Charlotte planned on throwing the blame for the recording onto Richard. However, Charlotte had no idea Emma was back and had no intention of letting that happen. Episode 193 A Change in Perspective if Richard admitted to creating a fake recording, Emma's innocence would be revoked and her scandal would ignite once again. Everything he had done to protect her would also backfire because it would be like he had something to hide, like her alleged relationships with multiple men. Charlotte was putting him in an extremely difficult situation. He didn't care what happened to him, but he didn't want Arnie or Emma hurt. After discreetly returning to New York, Emma contacted the friends she thought might be able to lend a hand while Eric went back to his place. She wasn't afraid of starting a battle with Charlotte. She just wanted to make sure Richard would escape unscathed. Emma, you're worrying yourself too much. Richard has his own way of dealing with things. I'm sure he won't stand idly by while Charlotte threatens him, Lisa said, trying to comfort her on their way to H-World. Going to H-World won't change anything. I'm not going there to talk to Charlotte, Emma replied. I'm going there to wait for Richard, unless you have a better way to get in contact with him. Lisa shook her head. Richard wasn't answering any of their calls. Since the press conference was being held at H-World, he would definitely be there ahead of time. Lisa, get someone to find out where Arnie is buried, she instructed as she suddenly thought of the only other place he would most likely be. Lisa nodded. This was one job she was good at. A few minutes later, she told Luke, who was driving, where the gravesite was and asked him to drive there. After Luke picked them up from the airport, Eric had told him to drive Lisa and Emma wherever they needed to go while they were in New York. Lisa and Luke were a bit awkward when they first saw each other, as this was the first time they'd been around each other since Lisa suggested they live together. Luke may not have understood her reasoning, but he was still playing the part of her fiancé, and her heart fluttered a little as he drove them around. Luke and Lisa stayed in the car while Emma got out. She wrapped herself in a coat to ward against the foggy and overcast day as she entered the graveyard. As expected, she found Richard in front of Arnie's grave. Their eyes met. Richard was obviously shocked as he stood up and asked, What are you doing here? You still have a lot to do in London. If you know that, then why did you leave so abruptly? She replied, eyeing him before he placed a bunch of white roses on Arnie's grave. She clasped her hands and bowed her head slightly in respect as she studied the photo of the young woman on the tombstone. I take it you heard about the press conference this afternoon, he asked. Yep, she said, nodding. I finally understand why Eric always asks me why I choose the hardest path every time, even when there's an easier solution, because I want to ask you the same thing. Did you come back so you wouldn't be implicated or what? He asked, 
dodging the question. Do you really think I'm afraid of Charlotte? Emma asked as she looked at him. I just don't want you to go through the same thing I have. Emma, have you ever experienced a moment of total despair? He asked, lowering his head as he touched the photo on the tombstone. Even though his lover had been gone for several years, the pain in his heart was still fresh. Of course. Three months ago, I discovered my fiancé was having an affair the night before our wedding. The next day, I met and married Eric at the courthouse, she replied. But if I hadn't met Eric, I still wouldn't have given up on love. Why would I let something like that stop me? I'm extremely grateful that I ended up meeting him. Everything we've gone through since has been completely worth it. Isn't it painful? He asked. Sometimes, but true pain is spending year after year missing someone while life goes on for everyone around you. Emma pulled a business card out of her purse and continued. I don't know if you need this but I want to offer you a fresh start. No matter what you decide to do at the press conference this afternoon, you have my full support. Charlotte, on the other hand, if I get a chance, I will tear her apart for everything she's done to us. She turned around and left the graveyard, leaving him in peace as he thought about her words and her offer. He repeated her words in his head as a weight suddenly lifted off his shoulders. He smiled, lowered his head, and spoke to the photo on the tombstone. Arnie, she's right. I've kept myself locked away for too long. It's time for me to live my life on my own terms. It's time to focus on me and the people I care about who are still alive. A large number of reporters had already gathered in the conference room as they waited for the press conference to start. They were all eager to hear what Richard had to say about Charlotte and H-World's recent scandal. Charlotte stood to one side and chatted with Lucas as she watched the staff set up the stage. You need to be careful with Richard. Back when the three of us were still on good terms, he was always the type to deal with the situation quietly and discreetly so others wouldn't worry. He's clever and sneakier than you're giving him credit for, Lucas told her. Charlotte crossed her arms as she said, It doesn't matter how capable he is. Arnie has always been his weakness. There's nothing he wouldn't do for her, dead or alive. Do you really think he'll betray her for Emma? Lucas didn't share her confidence or faith. Her ego caused her to overlook a lot of things, including change. Nothing was forever. He kept quiet, though. He knew she wouldn't listen to him. Richard entered H-World, dressed in a gray suit, and headed over to Charlotte and Lucas. He reminded her, Don't forget what you promised me. She smiled as she said, I remember. I'll give you all the information I have. Richard turned his gaze to Lucas. Of the three of us, I thought I'd be the unhappy one. What's wrong with you? Lucas lifted his chin and replied, My beef is with Emma, not you. You can only blame yourself for choosing the wrong side. But if you have issues finding a job after this, come talk to me. Richard suddenly let out a laugh, startling Charlotte. It had been years since she'd seen such a carefree smile on his face. Maybe Lucas is right and he has changed, she thought to herself as Richard walked off and stepped on the stage. Will he stick to his side of the bargain and take the blame for the recording, she wondered, as the press conference started. Episode 194, Pawn Takes Queen. Richard faced the reporters calmly as multiple camera shutters went off. The corners of his lips curved up in a small smile. The last time he stood in front of such a large audience was years ago when Arnie became the international spokesperson for VL. 
The press conference started, and the reporters were given 15 minutes to ask questions, while H-World staff kept everything in order. Charlotte stepped up on the stage and looked around. We are here to discuss and clear up the recording fiasco that recently came out. We've gotten where we are today through hard work and dedication. Recently, one of our models was dragged through the mud, and now it's happening to me. I've kept my silence so far because I believe that justice will prevail. Richard stood by her side as Charlotte spoke. He really wanted to ask how she could be so shameless. Does she feel no shame at all? She's clearly trying to suggest that Emma is behind everything going on, he thought in disgust. Now, please welcome Richard Collins to the stage. I'm sure he will give everyone a satisfactory explanation, Charlotte said before stepping back. However, before she could retreat completely, one of the reporters suddenly asked, Charlotte! Are you trying to say that everything H-World has gone through lately is because of the new model you signed, Emma? They had seen right through her, through her true intentions. Everyone looked at the reporter and back at a stunned Charlotte as they wondered if she would deny it. If she started insulting a model she had personally signed, she would embarrass and malign herself. She simply smiled mysteriously instead of responding. Then she eyed Richard darkly, thinking, I'll finally get my revenge on Emma. By the time she hears about this in London, it'll be too late. The success from the JK show will mean nothing, and she'll be right back at the bottom. I don't care if the reporters know what I'm trying to do. It's no secret we've been fighting for weeks. One way or another, I'll ruin her career. Richard? Charlotte gestured for him to speak, a threatening tone underlying her words. Richard nodded before turning to face the reporters. Before I tell you about the recording that you've all heard about in the news, I want to talk about a slightly unrelated subject, he said, smiling at everyone. I've been in this industry for a long time and I've worked myself up from a mere assistant to one of the industry's top managers. I can't tell you how many times I've been on a stage just like this and been forced to tell you things that disgusted me. Before I tell everyone the truth, I want to talk about someone everyone's forgotten, but who was very important to me, Arnie. The reporters looked at each other. They didn't understand why he was suddenly mentioning Arnie, but no one was more uncomfortable than Charlotte. She started to get worried as he continued talking. I'm sure everyone's aware that Arnie died in a car accident. We had a huge argument that day while she was driving and ended up hitting a barrier. She died on sight, and I was seriously injured. H-World covered it up and I was naive enough to think they were doing it for my own good. But now, I know they only covered it up out of guilt. Richard, what do you think you're doing? Charlotte asked as she grabbed his arm. He laughed quietly, lowering his voice before saying, Didn't you want me to tell the truth? I'm just doing what you asked. He pulled his arm out of her grip and continued, they felt guilty because Arnie's death was their fault. Charlotte secretly stalked us as she tried to find evidence of our relationship, and my two so-called friends, Ariadne and Lucas, outed our relationship to the media. We were arguing about that when the car accident happened. The reporters were shocked. They'd never expected him to expose something that happened years ago. Charlotte immediately ordered Lucas to call security and remove him from the stage. But Richard continued to speak. Do you know why they did all that? Jealousy. Charlotte is jealous of her models and is constantly thinking of ways to control them and bring them down. Years ago, it was Arnie. And now, it's Emma. I'd almost forgotten about Charlotte's underhanded methods. But she reminded me who she really is. 
That recording is completely real and the best evidence I can give you. I still have the original recording on my phone, Richard said. Lucas approached the stage with security. They were trying to remove him from the stage by any means necessary, even violence, and didn't care that they had a room full of reporters. The security team kicked and punched him, but he didn't go down easily, so Lucas called for more security. Charlotte calmly announced that the press conference was over, while security ganged up on Richard. While everyone nervously watched the scene before them, a tall figure appeared in the entrance to the conference room. Someone who was supposed to be in London. Episode 195 Goodbye, H-World. Reporters began clamoring at Emma's entrance. Emma Miller? Isn't that Emma Miller? Why is she back? Oh, God. Emma's getting involved. Now we have a good show to watch. They furiously snapped photos of her. The moment things became interesting, she had suddenly returned. Despite how the model was known for keeping a low profile... She seemed to leave a path of destruction behind her, and the places she appeared always turned into battlefields. As soon as Charlotte noticed her approaching the stage, she turned toward Lucas and gestured for him to contain the situation before things became worse. H-World security promptly turned toward Emma. However, to everyone's surprise, she had brought along her own professional bodyguards. Security couldn't do anything except watch her walk to the stage. Not too long ago, everyone had been certain that these two women were on good terms, especially since Emma had praised Charlotte. Yet, in a short period, their relationship had turned not only sour, they had become enemies. How come you're back? Shouldn't you still be in London? Charlotte sneered. If I didn't come back... I would have been defamed until you destroyed my career. Emma removed her sunglasses and stared down at Charlotte. Whenever she faced women, Emma always found herself towering over them, and Charlotte wasn't the exception. Charlotte glared at Emma with hate-filled eyes. The scene playing out between them had slipped out of her control. She originally thought Emma would speak, giving her a chance to argue back. However, Emma simply had her bodyguards deal with the security around Richard before telling him, say what you want to say and do what you want to do. What are you? Charlotte eyed her with confusion and suspicion. I'm simply here to protect my friend, Emma said sincerely. Richard, you can speak about your grief and suffering. Once you let it all out, you can finally be free. Richard looked at Emma, the unpredictable woman before him. Back in the Brooklyn city center, for Lisa's sake, she had been willing to risk her image by slapping Cheryl May and her manager. Now, for his sake, she had flown all the way from London to put up a safety wall in front of him. He felt a rush of confidence as he lifted his head and faced the reporters. Then he pulled out his phone and played the original recording. The recording is real. After this, I'll send it to be examined for authenticity. As for what I mentioned earlier, about Charlotte being envious of her models, I'm sure everyone already has a rough idea. Previously, in an attempt to control Emma, Charlotte ordered her to have dinner with Brad Riley the night before their shoot. Emma refused, resulting in the messy aftermath. Following that, Charlotte caused a series of incidents. All of Emma's jobs were given to Cheryl and Hillary. Fortunately, Emma's outstanding advertisement for LM managed to earn her back her well-deserved recognition. Then, in an attempt to prevent Emma from doing the interview with Talkmaster, Charlotte went as far as kidnapping the grandfather of Emma's assistant, Lisa. 
This required Emma to publicly ask for his return on the show. Finally, the stalking incident during JK's show. It's almost unbelievable that an agency CEO would actually hire a team to slander their own model. Richard shook his head in disappointment before continuing. Despite that, Charlotte did everything I just told you to Emma after she signed on with H-World. And as her manager, I was a first-hand witness to it all. As soon as he finished, the reporters were thrown into a frenzy. H-World Entertainment had never been involved in such an extraordinary scandal. No one thought their internal battle was so extreme and that so much drama boiled beneath the surface. Charlotte took a few steps back from the uncontrollable situation, as if she were being repulsed. Richard had plenty of evidence to support his allegations. She had no way of retaliating, nor preventing people from digging up the truth. I never thought Richard would be the one to expose everything, she bemoaned. Barely able to withhold her anger, she turned to him. Richard, don't you want to survive this industry? Do you have a death wish? Do you think I still care about staying? He shot back coldly. From the time you pushed Arnie to her death, to the times you've schemed to hurt Emma, I vowed to myself, I'd make you pay someday, Charlotte. He scoffed in disdain. The industry? As if I'd still care about that. Bitter tears rolled down her cheeks from red eyes that glared at him. Throughout this, the reporters were still riled up and spewing their commentary. My God, if everything Richard said is the truth, then Charlotte and h -World Entertainment are dangerous. I know, right? Murder and kidnapping. As a second-tier modeling agency, I never thought h -World Entertainment would be so dirty. Now I realize how wrong I was. I don't know about Arnie's incident, but I've heard my fair share about Emma. Rumors have been circulating the industry about her being suppressed for quite some time. The only difference is that Emma isn't bullied as easily as Arnie. Charlotte heard all the ridicule and speculation coming from the reporters and hysterically yelled, None of it is true! Richard, you've said so much, but do you have any evidence? If you can't show any evidence then you'll have to pay for how you've slandered me today, she ranted. I see what you're trying to do here. Everything was planned by you and Emma to destroy me. Charlotte's spectacle drew everyone's attention. Compared to Richard, she was clearly flailing to talk her way out of the scandal and try and frame them for everything. Charlotte, do you really want to see evidence? He looked at her from behind the bodyguards with an expression of ridicule and sadness. She choked, unexpectedly speechless as her thoughts churned. If I demand evidence, no stone will be left unturned online. I can't come back from that. He was emboldened again by her silence. Do you know how much I wish that you had nothing to do with Artie's death? And that you just lost your mind for a moment? But after seeing how hard you tried to defame Emma, I realized that I could no longer remain silent. Emma just wants to be a successful model. She's never had intentions of going against you. But you have endlessly tried to hurt her and the people around her. You even sacrificed me for your motives. So, I'm officially announcing my resignation from H-World Entertainment. Episode 196. What an awesome plot twist. Hearing that Richard wanted to leave, the reporters slowly started whispering amongst themselves. Richard wants to leave? One reporter exclaimed. Of course he wants to leave an agency like this. If he sticks around, he's just waiting to be destroyed. But 
But if Richard leaves, what will happen to Emma? Someone asked. Emma is still H World's model, another reporter answered. He couldn't be blamed for wanting to leave. After all, he had revealed all of H World's secrets. Regardless of how truthful his claims were, H World would suffer a loss. Every single incident mentioned was bound to leave a permanent stain on its name and be endlessly used until Charlotte's demise. Now that they had reached this point, it was impossible for him to continue working with her. Richard, do you really think someone else would want you after leaving H-World? Charlotte asked. Her sharp voice wavered as she spoke harsh and unpleasant words. You ignored the company's interests and exposed our secrets. How could you continue in this industry? No one will want you. No one! She shouted from behind the bodyguards. So what? He thought with a calmness he'd never experienced before. All the struggles and pain I've endured are finally in the past. He simply smiled as he responded to Charlotte. Since I've decided to leave H-World, I have no intention of continuing as a manager. In a firm but gentle voice, he told her, Charlotte, you spent your entire life trying to control others without succeeding. In the process, you've lost yourself instead. From the moment he announced his resignation, he'd already felt reborn. He faced the reporters one last time and looked at Emma, saying, To me, Emma is truly an amazing woman. She upholds her responsibility and maintains her individuality, even in such a glamorous industry. She couldn't possibly be the awful things that Charlotte and the paparazzi keep calling her. She enjoys walking on the runway because she believes it's her destiny. She originally wanted to use H-World as a platform for achieving her dreams. But all she experienced was endless pain caused by Charlotte. Toward Charlotte, I really have no more words. He slowly shook his head in disappointment. I would like to ask everyone to no longer believe articles released by H-World about Emma. The reality is that H-World has hurt her more than they have helped her. Finally, Richard faced Emma and asked her what she was planning on doing. She laughed. As she said from the start, she was only there to help a friend. I need to return to London. Can you hurry up a little? The reporters laughed at her attitude toward the situation. She truly appeared to be someone who didn't like trouble. She seemed like she was honest and kept her promises. At a time like this, she had no intention of striking back against Charlotte, making her tolerance admirable. Even with the ongoing battle, she managed to keep herself out of the situation. It was obvious that she wanted to fade into the background because her main priority was helping Richard rediscover himself. As for what Charlotte owed her, she would deal with it later. Richard, you can't leave. You'll be breaching your contract, said Charlotte. Don't forget, you'll need to compensate triple the amount if you leave now. Her conceited attitude made her believe that Richard's name would be completely tarnished and that he wouldn't be able to survive in the industry after leaving H-World. Perhaps he had lost his opportunity to be a manager ever again. But that didn't mean his life was destroyed. He didn't get a chance to respond before four men dressed in stylish black suits entered H-World's main hall. From the looks of it, they were bodyguards. Afterward, a slightly chubby, middle-aged man approached Charlotte with the bodyguards and smiled. Actually, Miss Garcia, I really need to thank you. As my most capable student, I've long wanted to send Mr. Collins to pursue a career in California. He's got a natural talent for film, so I'm planning to send him to become a director. He has a promising future in Hollywood. The man sniffed with disdain. As for your modeling agency, you can continue having fun with it on your own. So that was Richard's plan, Emma thought, and finally...
finally breathed out a sigh of relief. Do you guys recognize this man? One of the reporters had a good eye and had immediately recognized the middle-aged man in front of them, exclaiming, He's the famous director, William Rose. Who would have imagined? Not only has Richard been a great manager, but he has other talents as well, one reporter stated with a glint in her eye. Another reporter narrated dutifully to the camera. Has H-World embarrassed themselves too badly this time? Here, Charlotte was thinking Richard would be in the streets after leaving H-World. Meanwhile, he'd already been scouted by a famous director. Just like that, Richard has been snatched from right under her nose. What an amazing plot twist. I really hope a better agency snatches Emma away too. At Kaleidoscope Entertainment, Eric was sitting in his office watching the news. Seeing Emma act as a human barrier for someone, he couldn't help but give a small grin. The internet was already in an uproar as fans started leaving comments on her fan pages, telling her to quickly find another agency. After all, as many comments voiced, she couldn't keep working at H-World. However, she felt this was the best time to work with him, because from now on, Charlotte's every move would be under public scrutiny, preventing her from holding Emma back. He understood what she was thinking, but it didn't stop him from hoping for something else. Nevertheless, just because she didn't leave with Richard didn't mean she didn't have other plans. By the time one of the reporters blurted out that they wanted her to go to a better agency, Eric was already planning something. Of course, he didn't forget to be happy for Richard. Although he could no longer be a manager, he believed Richard would be able to have a fresh start in a new city. They may even have a chance to work together in the future. Once again, the important mission of looking through Emma's contracts was returned to his hands. She'd always worried that he would grow tired of it, but from then on, it would be the norm. H-World's main hall was a complete mess, especially when Emma and Richard started to leave. Lucas watched as the two headed for the exit in front of the reporters. In his eyes, they were rubbing salt in Charlotte's wounds as they left the room. Can they really leave just because they want to? He thought bitterly. When were things ever that easy? Everyone had neglected him as he stood to the side. However, out of everyone in H-World, Lucas was the one they should have been the most afraid of. Episode 197, Nothing But The Best Emma, although I can no longer be your manager, I'll forever remember the time that I spent with you. I feel very happy and lucky to have met you. When the time finally came for Richard to leave, he stuck out his hand and gestured for Emma to shake it. She gave a gentle laugh as she grabbed his hand. To be honest... You're truly an amazing manager. If not for Charlotte's scheming, I had no intention of letting you go. He let go of her hand. For a moment, he refused to believe what was happening. I also thought, at one point, that I'd be able to accompany you to the end. If not, I hoped at least to help you become a supermodel. However, it doesn't matter. Although I'm no longer your manager... There's someone else who is willing. I'm sure you're well aware that you have a devoted husband at home. And I'm also a devoted wife, okay? She refuted. I'll continue paying attention to you, he continued. If you have any difficulties, don't hesitate to give me a call. If one day you decide to leave modeling and become an actress, you can come look for me. Perhaps there really will be a day like that. She felt nothing was impossible. Well, I have to go now. Emma, I know you didn't express your thoughts today because you're waiting for Charlotte to turn around and beg you. You've said it before. You're going to make her kneel before you. However, don't forget about Lucas. Come
compared to Ariadne and Charlotte, he's better at hiding his true intentions. She gave him a mysterious smile. She wasn't Charlotte, so she was well prepared for all possibilities and knew how to be cautious. Richard had nothing to worry about. Above all, she still had Eric backing her up. Hurry up and leave. I still need to go home and keep my devoted husband company. Richard's lips curved upward as he reached out his arms to embrace her. Finally, she and Lisa watched as he set off for a fresh start. In reality, he knew that even if Charlotte hadn't ruined things, he wouldn't have been able to accompany Emma on her path to becoming a supermodel. There was already someone much more willing to do that. And he believed someone as great as her deserved the best. Let's go, Emma. We should head back to the airport, Lisa reminded her. Her work in London wasn't complete, and she only had a couple days of leave. She couldn't let the photographers and other models continue to wait for her. I want to go see Eric. Do you miss him? Lisa winked. Emma didn't deny it as she nodded her head. Let's go. Lisa cheerily agreed as she turned the car toward Kaleidoscope Entertainment. Along the way, every radio station story was focused on H-World's press conference. The discussions endlessly circled around Emma, Charlotte, and Richard with one overarching opinion. Charlotte was in deep trouble this time. The press conference today helped us get some justice. If not for today, I wonder what other schemes Charlotte had planned for us. Emma contemplated Charlotte's crumbling image as they left H-World and couldn't help but sneer as the thought crossed her mind. A person like Charlotte would never admit to being wrong. She would simply think she had bad timing and luck. Where is Charlotte right now? Lisa barked a laugh. <laughs> Didn't you hear? After we left, the reporters completely swamped her. She ended up being hit by one of the cameras and was sent to the hospital. In that case, are you still upset? Emma suddenly asked Lisa. At first, this question seemed like it came out of nowhere. But after a moment of silence, Lisa finally responded. She understood Emma was getting back at Charlotte for the humiliation she suffered at Brooklyn City Center. I've long given up being upset. Who do you think I am? Do you think irrelevant people like that would be worth me getting upset over? Emma lifted her head to look at her. She was aware that Lisa had always been optimistic, so she didn't say anything else. As long as Lisa was able to move on, she felt relief. Suddenly, Luke's injured knee came to her mind, so she made a suggestion to Lisa. In a moment, when we pass by the pharmacy, drop in and buy some medicine for Luke. I think he may have broken his kneecap trying to grab your passport. What? Lisa's shock and worry made her slam on the brakes. Emma glared at her until she quickly started driving again. In that case, I'll go to a nearby pharmacy. Emma remained silent as she gave Lisa a curious look. Lisa smiled awkwardly, realizing her reaction had been a little over the top. The relaxed atmosphere of the car was interrupted by a girl speaking on the radio. Excuse me, host. Could you please help me contact Emma? I need to find her. I have something urgent to tell her. Like the hosts, Emma assumed the girl must have been a fan. They quickly comforted her, saying, Sorry, miss. Our program has no way of contacting Emma. But it's urgent. A life is on the line. She promised. The confused host, thinking she must be crazy, cut the line and warmed the atmosphere with jokes before taking on the next call. Emma didn't take the incident to heart. After all, she had plenty of fans with plenty of stories to tell. It wasn't always easy to differentiate between what was true and false. After a 40-minute car ride, she arrived downstairs at Kaleidoscope. Lisa followed her, anxiously clenching the medicine in her hands. Inside the elevator, 
Luke looked questioningly at Emma as she appeared from the secret walkway. Ma'am, why haven't you left yet? Isn't your flight at 4.30 this afternoon? Where's Eric? In the lounge. Luke rushed to hide the medication behind his back. Too late. Emma had already seen it. Is Eric sick? Emma's brow furrowed in concern. Actually, it's nothing serious, said Luke. He just has migraines sometimes. How come he's never mentioned it at home? And how come I've never seen him have migraines? He must not want you to know. You know what he's like. He couldn't bear for you to worry. Luke smiled before handing the tray in his hands to Emma. Here, I'll leave this with you. At that moment, Emma disregarded everything and rushed into the lounge. As for Lisa and Luke, who were left behind, they awkwardly looked at each other before she pretended to focus on a rainbow outside. She then shoved the medicine in her hands towards him. He looked at the package in confusion. What's this? Didn't you hurt your knee? Luke opened the bag and gazed at the medicine inside. Not only was there medicine for his injury, but there was also medicine for the flu, fever, headache, and even arthritis. I, uh, accidentally bought too much. Take it as a thank you for taking care of Emma. Who the hell thanks someone with a ton of medicine, he wondered. Inside the lounge, Eric laid atop a black bed. He lacked his usual king-like presence. He was simply a man clutching his head in pain. Eric, Emma ran to his side. Episode 198, Under His Wife's Spell Under the dim lighting, Eric heard a familiar voice. He held back the throbbing pain in his head as his expression softened and he turned to look at Emma. Shouldn't you be boarding your flight? He couldn't hear the difference in his own voice, but she could detect the strain of trying to endure his pain. She felt her throat burn and was afraid that she would cry if she spoke. So she put down the medicine and sat on the edge of the bed. She gently helped him up before pulling him into a tight embrace. Take some medicine first. He was in an anxiety-filled daze. He felt her tears on his shoulder, so he quickly tried to turn around. But again, she ordered, Take your medicine. He didn't resist and obediently took the medicine and water from her hands. She watched him swallow the medicine before gently taking his head into her hands and massaging it. She then placed a soft kiss on his head. He closed his eyes. At a time like this, he had no energy to explain himself. After roughly half an hour, the medicine finally kicked in and his mind began to clear. He pulled away from Emma's embrace to face her. Her eyes were still watery as she stared at him without a sound. It only hurts every now and then. It's not that serious. I did a medical examination not too long ago. I don't care. She lowered her head as a tear dropped onto his hand. All I know is that seeing you in pain makes me anxious. I didn't know what I could do for you. Emma wasn't someone who often cried. She faced most difficulties calmly. Only when it came to Eric did she react in such a way. He pulled her into his embrace and held onto her tightly as he comforted her with strokes on her back. Seeing you in pain makes me lose all reasoning, she admitted. Hearing these words, he suddenly realized something. Taking care of myself is part of taking care of her. Her tears did not merely fall upon his hand. They were like a hammer crashing down on his heart. He waited for her to calm down in his arms. A while later, he whispered in her ear, Later today, 
I'll tell Luke to arrange another examination at the hospital. She remained silent as she bit down on his neck. He was already used to her method of letting off steam. Whenever he made her emotions fluctuate, whether it was excitement or anger, she would use this method to respond to him. She bit onto his thin skin, unwilling to let go. But he let her bite as hard as she wanted and smiled as he hugged her tighter. It's okay. After taking the medicine... I feel a lot better. She finally released him with an aching heart. He looked at the alarm clock on the bedside table before offering to take her to the airport. Otherwise, you won't make it in time. She didn't want to get up, but he lifted her up in his arms. After tidying up a bit, he carried her out of the lounge. Inside the office, Lisa and Luke were still looking at each other, awkwardly. Seeing Eric carrying Emma out, they quickly gathered around. What is it? What happened? Wasn't the boss unwell? How come Emma ended up being the delicate one? Lisa wondered incredulously. I'm taking you guys to the airport now. Lisa, take good care of Emma. Lisa didn't understand what was happening. She simply stood in place as she gave a grunt of agreement. They quickly got into the car. However, Emma remained silent the entire way. He could tell that she had not yet recovered from the earlier emotional turmoil. So, as the car stopped at a red light, he reached out his hand to stroke her hair. It didn't take long before they reached the airport. In order not to be discovered by the media... He stopped the car in a quiet spot and gestured for Lisa to comfort Emma. Lisa understood his look as she got out of the car and dragged her out. You still have two or three days of work in London. We can't delay it anymore. Emma didn't respond. Her expression remained dull. As she got out of the car, she couldn't bear to look at Eric in case she felt regret. However... After entering the airport, she suddenly turned to Lisa and said, I'm still worried about him. What should I do? Lisa was stunned for a moment before smiling. Emma, you know better than me. When a person is indecisive and they don't choose what they feel is right, they will surely regret it. For example... If someone sees clouds as they leave the house and is undecided about whether to bring an umbrella, if they decide not to bring an umbrella, it will definitely rain. Or right now, when you want to go back and chase after someone. If you don't turn around right now, you might miss out on the chance to be there for him when he needs you the most. Upon Lisa's words... Emma stepped out of the line without hesitation and immediately ran back to the spot where Eric dropped her off. Luckily, because of traffic congestion, Eric's car had not yet left the airport. She quickly ran over, pulled open the car door, and sat back in the passenger seat. Eric was stunned. Why are you back? Tell Luke to book an appointment right now. I won't leave until I see the results, Emma said firmly. This may be a small issue to you, but I can't leave the country worried about you. Do you understand? He brushed a hand across her cheek and gave it to her. He had already sent her this far, yet she still insisted on coming back. How could I bear to send her off again? So, he immediately told Luke to contact the hospital and went to get an examination, accompanied by Emma. Finally, the doctor confirmed that there was nothing out of the ordinary. He had simply overworked himself, so his brain naturally wanted to revolt. Do you finally feel relieved? He asked as he held onto her shoulders. It's really just a small issue. She felt a load had been lifted off her shoulders. However, 
With the memory of the pained look on his face, she couldn't resist ordering him to join her in London. While I work, I'll make sure you get some rest. He sighed. His heart ached, and he felt helpless around her. Okay. Hearing his boss concede, Luke was surprised. He never stops working, not for anyone. It looks like he's completely bewitched by his wife. After a moment, he told himself firmly, This is good, really good. Apparently, the only person in the world capable of making Eric obedient was Emma. In the end, she missed her flight. Eric had no choice but to arrange for a private flight. He couldn't let her delay any further. Inside the luxurious plane cabin, Luke and Lisa sat to one side. One of them was looking through documents, and the other looked through videos. Meanwhile, Eric lay in Emma's embrace, marking the first time he fell asleep in her arms. Episode 199 Old News, New Schemes Inside a quiet hospital room, Charlotte awoke to the sharp smell of disinfectant. After opening her eyes, she stared blankly at the ceiling. Lucas guarded her bedside. Upon seeing her wake, he quickly asked, Are you better? Do you still feel dizzy? How's H-World? she asked with a raspy voice. He thought for a moment before answering her honestly. It's been severely affected. Even the police have been alerted, but I've already told the legal team to cooperate with them. As for murder and kidnapping, the police can't find any evidence, so it shouldn't be an issue. However, a lot of our collaborations have been canceled, including advertisements and endorsements. Apart from Emma, even Hillary has received a cold reception. After hearing this, she flipped over, turning her back to him as she closed her eyes and burst into tears. H-World is destroyed. It's been destroyed by my own hands. He didn't know how to comfort her. All he could do was sit quietly by her side as she cried. After a fair bit of time had passed, he finally asked, Right now, there are reporters everywhere. The doctors asked how you're feeling and whether you'd like to go home to rest. Right now, is there any difference where I go? She retorted. He couldn't stand her defeated attitude, so he stood and grabbed her shirt. All these years, you've been through so much. Can't you handle a little setback? H-World Entertainment hasn't closed down yet. You still have plenty of people and resources that you can use to solve our issues. Is there any point of hiding like this? Don't forget, Emma's contract is still with H-World. Her popularity is still H-World's legacy. That's right. She suddenly sneered and sat up as she pulled away from his grip. Emma is still under our control. She shouldn't consider going anywhere. I'll tie her down with this contract. Seeing her recover her fighting spirit, he slowly felt relief. He grabbed his phone and stepped out of the hospital room to return a call to his assistant. What's wrong? Sir, a young girl has shown up at the agency and insists on seeing Emma. She keeps screaming that a life is on the line. She doesn't seem to be just a fan. Because Emma belonged to H-World, the young girl went directly to there. However, she had no idea her decision would cause Emma's destruction. Did you ask her what's wrong? She doesn't want to tell us, the assistant replied. But from the looks of it, it's really urgent. She refuses to leave the lobby. Let me handle it when I get back. He hung up the phone before returning to the room. Charlotte had already changed her clothes. I'm going back to the agency. He grabbed her belongings, and they returned to H-World under the protection of security. As they entered the lobby, 
Lucas's assistant was standing at the entrance. As soon as he spotted Lucas, he immediately approached and pointed to the girl pacing back and forth. That's her. Lucas nodded. After escorting Charlotte to her office, he returned to question the girl. Miss, I've heard you're urgently looking for Emma. What's the matter? The long-haired girl quickly stood up and replied, I'm looking for her to save a life. Save a life? Can you give me her contact details? She asked sincerely. I hope you can help me. He remained silent for a few seconds before replying, Sorry, I'm the agency's director, and Emma's our model. For Emma's safety, I can't reveal her private information. However, you can tell me everything, and I'll pass the message on to Emma. As for whether she'll get in touch with you, that's her decision. The girl was a little distressed, but she understood his restrictions. So, she told him everything. Emma promised to save someone, but I can't tell you who it is. This person is currently in a critical state. That's why I've come to H-World. I already tried to contact her through the radio and multiple other avenues. But she's too famous these days. Contacting her isn't easy. I hope you can tell her, no matter what the Davis family has done to her, this person is innocent. Since she promised to save her, she shouldn't go back on her words. What sickness are we talking about? Why isn't the hospital helping? He asked. If the hospital could help, I wouldn't be looking for Emma. I really hope you can relay my message. Thank you. After speaking, the girl wrote down her contact details and handed them to him before shaking his hand. She then left the lobby. He looked at the phone number in his hands and, without a word, crumpled up the note and threw it straight into the trash. Davis family, he wondered. Returning to his office, he immediately instructed his assistant to investigate Nathan, who turned out to have a younger sister. More importantly, a sister with a serious illness. After seeing the information from his assistant, he leaned back in his chair, filled with satisfaction from his good luck. Emma, he mused. Let's see who the last one standing really is. Of course, he had no intention of passing the girl's plea to Emma. In London, Emma was doing a street fashion photo shoot. As the model who appeared in JK's finale... She skyrocketed in popularity within a short period and received an unimaginable number of offers. Eric lounged on the side of the road, dressed in a trench coat. He had simply followed the photography team and secretly watched over his wife. After finishing the shoot, she looked for him, only to find that he had disappeared. She retrieved her phone from Lisa to message him. Where did you go? Am I not allowed to go to the bathroom? He laughed at his own joke. She smiled as she teased him back. Don't run around wildly, or else I might decide to go home alone. Despite both being in London, Luke was extremely busy while Eric relaxed. As his boss strolled the streets, Luke attended video conferences on his behalf in the hotel noting down the important information for him. I'm going to have a migraine too if Emma continues like this, Luke griped to himself. As for the reporter from her vision, he had lost track of Emma over the last couple of days. After careful investigation, he finally got a hold of her latest schedule and was rushing to the scene of her shoot. Her schedule's so secretive. She couldn't possibly just be working, he thought. On top of that, with his persistent clinging, she'd still managed to shake him off and return to New York, proving how cautious she was. However, the more cautious she was, the more curious he felt. He refused to believe that she would forever remain this alert. I'm certain, the reporter insisted. 
the man who dropped her off at the airport in Mexico will make another appearance. Episode 200, Taking Care of Things Together In order to find out about Margot's exact condition, Lucas instructed someone to retrieve the note that had been scrunched up and thrown in the bin. He then secretly found the girl's address. She hadn't expected Lucas to show up at her house. Assuming he had a message from Emma, she quickly and cheerily led him into the house. Are you here to tell me that Margot will be saved? Lucas looked at the naive expression on her face and slowly curved his lips upward. Can you tell me Margot's current condition? The girl thought for a moment before sitting down on the sofa next to him. She hesitantly started to explain the situation. I met her in high school, and we later went to study abroad together. Unfortunately, her kidneys weren't working well, and we had no luck looking for a compatible donor. Eventually, her illness worsened, so we decided to return to America. At the time, Nathan brought Emma along to do a compatibility test. After all the failed compatibility tests in the past, she was the only one who was completely compatible. The girl lowered her head and sighed. Afterwards, we found out about the incident with Global Pictures. Margot knew her brother was in the wrong, so she didn't bring up Emma's promise again. She knew the Davis family owed her too much. Because of this, she had a huge argument with the rest of her family. Right now, she's all alone in the hospital. Actually, I wanted to look for Emma a long time ago, but Margot kept stopping me. And her condition has just continued to get worse. I'm seriously afraid she won't be able to make it. I had no choice but to look for Emma. She belongs to your agency, right? That's why I came looking for you. The girl was an outsider to the industry and had no idea how dark and dirty it was. She had simply found out Emma belonged to H-World, but had no idea how bad the model's relationship with the company was. I've tolerated it for long enough. Since Emma made a promise, she should follow through. Even the doctor has said that a person can continue normal bodily functions with just one kidney. After listening to the girl's explanation, Lucas weighed up the situation in his mind before asking, Is she in a serious condition? Her kidneys are failing and dialysis has not been enough to alleviate her pain, the girl replied, her voice choking. Lucas nodded. I've already contacted Emma. However, she doesn't seem to recall anything about this matter and hasn't given me a proper answer. Also, she's currently in London, and I have no way of speaking with her in person. The girl's face turned pale as she bit her lip. In the end, she nodded her head. No matter what happens, thank you anyway. You're welcome. He stood up to leave. As he walked away, he heard the girl mumble a few words behind him. He informed her, people from the entertainment industry really can't be trusted. And Emma is no different. I feel bad that Margot was actually concerned about her. The girl had no idea that Lucas had never contacted Emma. This wasn't the first time he'd done something like this. Keeping secrets and deliberately provoking both sides of an issue was his usual method of dealing with things. It didn't matter to him, even if someone's life was involved. It was nighttime in London. Emma was preparing dinner for Eric in the manor they were staying in. To help relieve his tiredness, Emma limited her husband to just two hours of work per day. The remainder of his time was spent on accompanying her at work and releasing stress. He leaned against the kitchen doorway with his arms crossed as he watched Emma busily cooking. He smiled. This is how it feels to be looked after by someone. It turns out that Emma has such a powerful side to her, he thought. Eric had always prevented her from entering the kitchen and was especially afraid of her holding knives. Therefore, 
everything they bought in London was pre-prepared. After quickly putting the ingredients together, dinner was ready. After eating, the couple sat on the sofa, leaning against each other as they watched a movie. Emma had always been the one to lie in Eric's arms. However, he was the one lying on her thigh at that moment, using it as a pillow. Once they felt tired, they headed for bed and lay facing each other. Emma reached out her hand to stroke his face and spoke with a soft voice. Did you know you really scared me? Uh-huh. He gently nodded his head. She hadn't been simply scared. She was frightened to the point of tears. What will you do from now on? Will you hide all by yourself and endure the pain? Eric looked into her eyes as he finally wrapped his arm around her neck and pulled her into his embrace, placing her head on his chest. I'm so glad to have you. What else could I wish for in this life, he thought. I already have a person who constantly has me in her heart. Emma lay on top of his body and buried her face in his chest. She reached out her arms to wrap around his waist. Eric... Please, don't get sick. Uh-huh. At that moment, he felt like a king who had been domesticated. To the outside world, he was fierce and powerful. But in front of Emma, he was allowed to show his weakness and be the one who was treasured and loved. It turned out that the relationship between a man and woman could also be like this. Whether they were the one to love or be loved... They were equally happy. After my work is done tomorrow, we'll return to New York. Eric shook his head. In terms of our lifestyle, I can listen to you. However, when it comes to work, you must listen to me. Now that you've worked for JK, I've sent a huge offer to your email. You're currently in a place where you can progress. If you miss this opportunity or reject it, then your work with JK will all go to waste. But I only had a migraine. It's not like it's a constant pain. Emma remained silent as she weighed up the pros and cons. She knew as well as Eric that if she were to miss out on this international offer, she wouldn't know how long it would take before an opportunity like this came around again. In that case, you should rest for another two days. As I said before, when it comes to our lifestyle, I'll listen to you. Eric didn't argue as he whispered in her ear. I'll take care of what happens outside our home while you take care of the inside. She smiled as she found a comfortable spot in his arms and fell asleep. After an entire day of work, she was exhausted. She was only one step away from becoming an international supermodel. She really hoped that everything would run smoothly. However, she was unaware that Lucas had already planted a ticking time bomb. Compared to the warm and comforting atmosphere in the bedroom, the study felt quite miserable to Luke and Lisa. One of them had to deal with the matters at Kaleidoscope, while the other had to look through Emma's contracts. However, while Luke was working hard, Lisa couldn't help but smile as she peeked at him from behind.